Okay, welcome to part three. We're gonna create Shockwave. However, before that, I want to fix some issues that we faced in part two, okay? So, first of all, I don't like this box here. So, I'm gonna choose uh, Smooth Shaded. I'm gonna go inside into Pyro and um, in here in the multi field, uncheck this and uncheck this. So, you can, you know, get rid of it. Second thing is, I can see there is ground plane 2 and ground plane 1, which I uh, didn't realize. So I'm going to go into flare source, go into pop net, and I'm going to change this ground plane 1 object to 1 from 2, so that you can get rid of that one. We don't need that, okay? So it's just going to be ground plane 1. All right. As I was saying in the in part 2, that I'm not entirely happy with this. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into uh, flare source and this resample node here. See uh, if I were to get that up here like that. So that's where it is right now. But I'm going to enable this resample by polygon edge. As soon as I enable that, that looks completely different. Okay, that's what I wanted to do. And then I'm gonna change the uh, scale in Create Fuel from 1.6 to 2 and the temperature also from 1.62. And then I also wanted to make one more change. So let's go into PyroSim. Let's run this through and see how it looks. This is to do with the visualization, okay? So I'm gonna go into the visualization and I think it's multi-field actually. I'm gonna change the density scale to 10 and shadow scale to, I don't know, maybe one. Then I'm gonna go into emission and I'm gonna change the emission scale really high, okay? So now you can see that's popping up pretty good. And I'll also change this to 8. And I'm just going to change this ramp a little bit. So that is only for visualization because right now it looks ugly, you know. Anyway, that's that. And I'm just going to bring darken it down a little. These are the values. And I'm going to push this out. Get rid of that. Push this out. Uh, maybe here and darken it a little bit and this one I don't want it like that at all in fact I'm just gonna create another one push it up get rid of the white and brighten this up a lot more and maybe give it a little more white okay so that looks good that looks a lot better um, compared to how it looked like before. And there's also one more thing is that I want to add some lights. Okay, so I'm going to add maybe a light just up here. RS light sun. Yeah, that's looking okay. Enable this and suddenly things are looking far better. I'm going to change the uh, display or background to light. Well, suddenly things are looking a lot promising, which is good. <laughs> um, I go, I'll go back into flare source where I initialize P scale and then I set the randomized P scale, but operation is set value, meaning it is not even looking at that anymore. So technically, I don't need that. So it's just the p-scale. We, we are setting the p-scale right here. Um, because if you were to use a an incoming parameter, you would change the operation to add or multiply or maximum, whatever, not set value, okay? Okay, let's now start creating our shock wave. Let's create a geometry. And we're gonna call this SWSRC which is shock wave, nice and easy. Let's create a sphere. 
I'm going to change this to polygon. Bring the radius down. Oops. Bring the radius down to 0.5. And yeah, let's increase the frequency. All right. And I'm going to clip this. So it looks like that. And then I'm going to create normal. Uh, these are going to be point normals. Let's click on that. And then let's create an attribute randomize. And I'm going to multiply this. I'm going to say n. There you go. That looks like that. I'm going to change the distribution to inside sphere. And it is three dimensional. And I'm going to enable cone angle and bias direction. Uh, let's say 90. It's something like that. I don't know. Okay. I'm going to change this direction to that way, which is in the Y direction. Okay. So. And let's increase the global scale to four just to see what it's doing. You can see how it, it moves. Okay, right there. Uh, I think that looks all right. Okay, and just like before, we're going to add this seed at a parameter onto here. And we're going to say plus one, two, three. And then we're going to create a point wrangle. Point wrangle. Um, noise up. And I'm just going to name these. And then I'm going to call this um, initialize V. And just like before, I'm going to say v at v equals at n. This time, just multiply by 2. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to enable visualize for velocity. So that's how it looks. I guess it's not bad. OK, let's create a pop network. Remember, the shock wave is supposed to go like that way. OK, that's why it's like that. I mean, we can change that later if we find it bad or something. So, uh, for example, if I come here, there, oops. And if you want to keep it minus one, it seems like it's a lot better because you want it to go that way. OK, so I think we're going to keep it a little at minus one for now. All right, let's jump into pop network. And I'm not going to make the mistake I did last time. So I'm going to go into flare source and grab the side. Just copy that and paste it here. So we've got that, we got that, and we got that. And then we will add a gravity force in here. Press L, H to lay it out. Let's look at the source. Okay, nothing to change here. And in birth, I want to activate this birth exactly the same. First of all, let me just bring this down to zero. Uh, this constant activation, I want to activate this at the same time as the flare source. So we're in the right place. This is the flare source pop net. I'm going to copy uh, constant activation from the flare source and I'm going to paste it in um, our shock wave source. Okay. So whenever that happens, this happens exactly at the same time. And I want 50,000 points. Okay. Because you need, you need to have a lot, a lot of it basically and get rid of this uh, velocity attribute um, visualization. 
change the laugh expectancy to 0.4 and 0.2. Look, these things are these are things that you can change and play around, um, and you can play around with these all day. So you will get different results, obviously. I'm going to change the inherent velocity to two. So let me save that and let me run that. Yeah, so we're getting somewhere. So I don't know if you can see it, but there. There, that's how it looks. All right. So I'm going to go back to Flare Source and I'm going to copy these four nodes. Paste them all here. Paste with that one. And let's look at, okay, go back to PopNet and I only want to bring in the pop object. So where is it? Oh, it's, yeah, that's where it is. Good. Create fuel. I'm going to keep input here so you can see. That's where it is. I'm going to leave these as they are, but I'm going to get rid of the velocity. I'm going to move to rasterize. All of this can stay the same. It's not any difference. I'm just going to reset the shutter to default and increase the blur samples. You'll know what I mean, okay? So, let me change the uh, background to dark again. Get rid of that grid. If I reduce this blur samples, I'm not seeing much of a difference, to be honest. Oh yeah, there it is, you're seeing it now. So it's a lot blurred, and that's what I want, basically. Okay, we have now set up our shockwave source. So we're gonna go in and get this added to the Pyrosim. Okay, let me close that. Pyrosim, and I'm just gonna copy this over here. I'm gonna call this SRC. Change the sub path. Uh, it's not technically out flares, is it? This is supposed to be out shockwave. All right, that's updated automatically. And I'm going to get rid of these animations. And I don't want the temperature to follow fuel anymore. So I'm going to get rid of that, make it independent. And I'm going to add velocity here. Okay. I changed, changed the operation from none to add. And I want, we should change this to one and this to one also. All right. A good way to really check this out is by disabling the rest of them and just running it using that. Let's see if that works. Yeah, you can see it works and I'm going to go to light mode. Maybe it's better for you to look from up here. Of course, you can already tell that you need to change the velocity because that looks like uh, a cross or a plus um, but I want sort of a circular shape so if I look there and that is where the problem is so I don't know we have to try and do something to get this to go sort of circular okay um, so let's change this operation to set value and there you go it's done the job so basically what that means is we don't need this normal um, but that normal can be there it's, I guess it's no big deal okay that looks uh, better and go in there now 
and run it again. Yeah, that's more like what I wanted. It's just I don't like these streaks as much. I'm not very, uh, I'm not a big fan of those, basically. All right, so let's see what we can do to get rid of that. See, I need to change this. Maybe I'll change this to add. So that should settle it a little bit. Yeah, that looks okay. But as you can see, that the fuel is getting big and I definitely do not want that. So I'm going to reduce this to say 0.2. You want a little bit of fuel, but not as much as uh, that. Okay, I think it looks good, but I just I'm not a big fan of these uh, these things here. Uh, that's okay. Let's go back into maybe PopNet and let's see if we can change this 50,000 to 100,000. Let's run it again. Yeah, I guess that's not bad, actually. I am still seeing a little bit of this. Um, all right, I'm going to call that it. I'm going to re-enable these. I'm going to try and sim it. Uh, smooth shaded. Okay, it's done a little bit of uh, simulation now, so let's look at it. Okay, you can tell that the uh, shockwave is coming through nice and good there you go it's, uh, you can you can tell it's happening and especially if I look at it from above and just pull this out a little yeah that's looking uh, pretty good okay so that is part three done We're going to move on to the next part, which is trails.